Sorry, what you watching? Um, sorry. Yeah, the time, the time. Um, Good evening, everyone. Um, welcome to the 2023 North Stonington Annual Finance Public Hearing. I'm uh, Michael Anderson. I am the co-chair of uh, the Board of Finance, stepping in for uh, Paul Simons, who could not be here tonight. So I welcome everyone um, to the hearing. I'm glad to see you guys all here. Uh, wish we had double the amount of people, but um, hopefully there's a lot of people online uh, attending as well. Uh, with us today are uh, Christine Wagner, the chair of the Board of Education, Troy Hopkins, the superintendent in schools, Bob Carlson, the uh, Board of Selectmen, uh, first selectman, and Christine Diaz, uh, the finance administrator for the town of North Stonington. And um, so we're here to talk about this year's uh, proposed budget for 2023-24. And um, I'll start off with a couple of slides and then we'll get into uh, the budgets that uh, we put forward uh, last week or two weeks ago. Go to the next slide. Uh, for the board, board of Finance, uh, obviously we have um, the major budget considerations and objectives haven't really changed. Um, we have to consider the present day economy, everyone's situation, uh, and particularly inflationary pressures that we've all all feel, uh, particularly as of late. Um, you know, I know you all feel it in your pockets, and uh, every. Um, every board here understands that and feels it within their own budgets, and I'm sure all of the different departments do as well. So that the uh, budgets put forward are taken down into account. Obviously, we have to support the operational needs of the uh, education and town government, and um, consider all the town's capital projects, investments, and uh, take care of the town's debt that we have uh, incurred and then accomplish that uh, within a balanced budget, which uh, may or may not require uh, an increase in revenue um, with a mill rate increase. Next, please. Uh, we don't generally, the way the, this budget process works is every January we get to hear from uh, Daryl Del Grosso regarding the grand list uh, from the previous October. Uh, and this year, uh, we learned from Daryl, we had an increase of 1.47% to the grand list um, from 597,543,542 to 606,335,226. So that's an uh, increase of 8,971,684 with... Um, with the solar farms and being the primary uh, driver of that growth, which is you know good news that you know the, the industries that are we are going to look for and are are trying to to bring to town are bringing in additional revenue. Um, of course, there were other factors as well, like you know the property taxes and uh, vehicle taxes are still are pretty high. Um, and. I just included in here. There's there's additional revenue uh, that's a consideration of the the town government budget, uh, and uh, first selectman Bob Carlson will go over them further in his discussions. But there is 190,345 of, of additional revenue brought in this fiscal year based upon the tuition that students from other towns are are bringing into this town. So I just like to highlight that it's fantastic because. You know, we made an investment, a serious investment in this town for on the building projects that um, have brought in, you know, a substantial amount of revenue that it's going to continue to increase to levels that we, you know, they may level off at some point. But, you know, in three years, we've we've increased the revenue to this town that goes to the town budget. It doesn't go to the Board of Education budget. 
It goes to the town budget as revenue. Uh, and again, we have an additional 190,345 that's in the budget from those uh, students coming from Ballantown and Preston. Uh, there's additional fees in uh, the government budget for uh, stuff that's associated with the transfer station. Um, I'm sure you've heard, we're gonna have stickers uh, has decided that we need to um, bring in more revenue for the, the transfer station, given the cost of, of running that facility, um, as well as making sure that it's the people that are, pro are using it are, are the ones that are supposed to be using it, meaning the residents. Uh, there's initial 36,180 for property rental, including uh, rental for the two-story wing over here. Uh, again, repurposing built our, our town properties to um, help increase revenue. So the original revenues that were reported in our in the original budget that came to us uh, were $615,558.53. And that was to support the budget or any increases in new expenditures or priorities. So that's what we saw as what we had to work with when we first started this process. And you know, looking out on, on the crowd here tonight, I know a lot of you are very familiar with this process because you, you're involved in, but just to go over again. So if there are people at home that don't necessarily understand what we do and how we come about this, uh, we'll just kind of overview the process again. Um, the Board of Selectmen go and, and, and get proposed budgets from their different departments. Uh, and they, the select uh, men, including uh, uh, Brett Mastriani and Nicole Porter, uh, review those uh, submittals from their departments. And that was completed roughly in February. Um, they, um, the departments come to see us and present, uh, the major departments come to see us and, and they present to the Board of Selectmen and the Board of Finance uh, in a combined meeting. So we can, you know, that saves time. They only have one pr presentation per department. That's like public works, the fire department, an ambulance association, uh, the library, the uh, rec uh, building, and is that it? Land use. Um, so then they, the Board of Selectmen takes that, uh, those proposals, they, they do a combined budget draft and present that to the Board of Finance. And that was done in early March. In March, we had meetings pretty much twice a week for the whole month in order to be able to vet all the information that we have and to um, uh, have uh, discussions regarding all the presentations that we saw. We also had a, a tax relief committee uh, that was put together by the selectmen um, to kind of review our tax relief programs in North Stonington as related to ones that are involved that the state puts out. And um, they actually presented to us in March. And um, we're going to be reviewing more of that uh, as the, after the budget season's over. Uh, but they did have some recommendations for us that that actually we did implement um, one of them. The Board of Education is obviously meeting during all that time uh, diligently to come up with their own board uh, proposed budget. Uh, uh, Troy Hopkins, who's here with us, is the, the uh, superintendent, provides uh, that budget to the Board of Education. They start vetting things out and um, they come to us uh, in March with their first budget. And those are reviewed again and again, and, and um, the Board of, board of Finance decides whether or not they need to ask the boards to go back and review their budgets with, and, uh, or uh, sharpen pencils and what have you. And um, this year we asked them to uh, make bottom line adjustments of 320,582. We suggested a one third cut from uh, Board of Selectmen and two thirds from the Board of Finance given the nature of the size of their budgets, but we allowed them to work amongst themselves to determine where those cuts should come from, but basically it was a total of 320,582. And uh, two weeks ago, they brought those revised drafts back 
um, to us in, uh, and they're voted on to be move, moved to this hearing by the Board of Finance. And we did that unanimously, uh, six to nothing, six, uh, four and zero against two weeks ago to bring us to this process. Um, so we're here for the town hearing. And next, uh, we will hear from the, the uh, from you here to see if we need to change anything to the proposed budgets. And then it goes to a town meeting and from there, the town moves it to a referendum. Those are all kind of scheduled right now, but we can probably talk more about that um, later on. So originally, um, the Board of Selectmen came to us with uh, a total government budget, um, including operational capital and debt of seven thousand. I mean, seven million four ninety seven one seventy seven. This was an increase of 386,212 or 4.78% over last year. And you see the, um, the numbers there. Uh, there were increases to operational. Again, we're all, we have inflationary uh, pressures on all of us include, and then there's contractual obligations uh, uh, there. Uh, there is, there was capital uh, requests for increase of 32.24%. Uh, zero increase to the debt. The debt's kind of fixed right now. And then the Board of Education original uh, budget was 15 million 288 275, which represented an increase of 760,815 or 5.24% over last year. And the main uh, drivers for that increase were contractual salary increases, but there was an additional um, ask of a, uh, a, another so, a new social worker, special education and paraprofessional positions. Um, those are the primary drivers of uh, those increases as well as supplies, but I'll let uh, Troy talk about those. So we came in, they came in with an initial request for new spending of 1,147,027. And um, I'll leave it to, uh, First, like Bob Carlson to review his the budget as revised and as uh, put forward today. I mean, two weeks ago by the Board of Finance. Okay. Good evening. I uh, hope you don't mind. I took my sport coat off. I uh, look around the room. I see most people here remember the old Boston Garden. The old Boston got him with the Boston Celtics played. Uh, there was a guy named Red Auerbach was the general manager. He was always accused of playing dirty and trying to get an advantage over the opposing team. And one thing he was accused of was always turning the heat up in the visitors' locker room. And he said if he did that, the other team would get lethargic and they wouldn't play as hard. That was not our intent tonight, believe me. Um, if we need to take a five-minute break between presentations and all walk outside, we could do that and come back in. But uh, yeah, I apologize. I, when you see what we put in the budget for this building, it's probably not high enough because I don't know if we're carrying the oil price to rate. But anyway, with that said, I'm only here to talk about two parts of the budget tonight. Uh, one's the government operating budget and one is the capital budget. Uh, government operating budget has an increase of 233,022 for a 4.38% increase. And capital has an increase of 6,765 for a 1.66% increase. So the Board of Selectmen, when we got together, myself, Nicole, and Brett, we said, what were our goals for the budget this year? Since we've been elected, we've always said, let's have it in the budget. We don't want any appropriations after the budget's closed. Uh, we don't think it's fair to go back to, the go back to the town and ask for more money when the taxpayers go down on the budget. So unless it's an emergency, we're not going back. Second thing, as far as this building goes, uh, we wanted to complete the demo with the opera funding, which we think we have. If you've noticed, the wall is about seven feet tall now, the brick wall. That's got about another week and a half to go. Once that's finished, they'll take the fence down, they'll grade it, and we'll put hydro seed on it, and we'll have green grass there, and hopefully it'll be nice and cleaned up in time for graduation. Um, we put 85000 in the budget for this building, which there was a couple of years we didn't fund this building, and last year we did, and this year we're doing 85000 again, and they said... Maybe after tonight, we should raise it to 90,000. So that might be a correction by the Board of Finance. Um, and the other thing is we wanted to start getting income for this building, and we have. We signed a contract with the North Stonington Early Learning Center. You've noticed a white car over there. 
Also, the people that work at the library knows there's no more cut through. Um, you can't cut through this building going to come out of the back of the library anymore. It's closed off. And we're planting grass, and that's going to be a playground for the early learning center. So no more shortcuts around the building that way. Um, the other thing we want to do is we wanted to not use the undesignated fund. Uh, that's our piggy bank, it's our rainy day fund. And we didn't want to go into that, and we haven't uh, for the last two years, which is a good thing. Four years ago, we took $440,000, which we had to then repay in the following year's budget. The earth that we took 194 out of it, 194000 We had to repay that back. So last year, we didn't take anything out of it. And once again, the Board of Finance felt we shouldn't take anything out this year. Which I think is a, it's great because we're borrowing against it, but then we have to pay it back anyway. Uh, the last thing as far as our goals is we actually, be, the week before we actually took office, a year over a year ago now, we knew that we had to do something about the transfer station. But there was so much going on with the, between the demolition and this building and other things in town that we put it off for a year. We had to address it this year, which we have. So we've added revenue lines for, for sticker fees, bulky waste fees. We've moved the bottle bill, which is for those little nip bottles we get money for. We've moved that into revenue for the transfer station. And we're getting ready for the bulky waste pile closure, which could happen somewhere between five and 15 years. We don't know when that's gonna happen, but we know it's gonna be expensive. And also we took some money that was put aside by the Board of Finance last year for the walking floor trailers. And we're changing the, the way we're gonna operate the transfer station shortly. We're gonna go to compactor so we can do our own trucking. So we took the money away from that truck and we put it towards a new truck, which um, we'll talk a little bit about later on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna hit every line item. We'll take questions after my presentation, but we're gonna hit section by section. The first section being B1, Board of Selectmen. There's a $15,061 increase. Basically what we did was being on the Council of Governments in the meeting monthly, we see that a lot of towns are running are losing employees to other towns and not getting employees back. Um, it took us three advertisements to get a, a um, planner. We finally hired a planner. He's gonna start on April 24th, but we advertised that three times before we were able to get someone to come in. And the gentleman coming in is from Colchester and we were lucky to find him, but we also didn't wanna lose any employees. So we looked at other towns and saw where our employees stacked up with some of the other towns. And because of that, we put some raises in this year's budget. And um, the reasons were the first selectman, the accounting journalist, and the admin finance director. Second line probate court, that's just a $70,000, a $70, not $70,000, $70 increase. And that's just a typical increase by them. We get a yearly increase, which is small. The board of finance, an increase of $1,090 because we had to change auditing teams. So we used King and King and they did an excellent job. The tax assessor's office, 3,237. That's B on the B4. That was contractual. Uh, we The unions met this uh, this summer. We were both unions and we had contractual obligations now with three year contracts with both unions. Uh, nothing in the board of assessment appeals. The tax collector, you'll see there's an increase, 14,497. It's because the town voted to go to, the Board of Finance voted and agreed with us to go from a part-time to a full-time tax collector. That department hasn't been in better hands in I don't know how long, maybe ever. Um, anyone that's dealt with Zane knows that she's um, very knowledgeable. She's been a certified tax collector for a number of years and she's bringing us to a new level when it comes to tax collecting. And we've already learned a lot from her and she's only been with us about four, for about four months. Town treasure was just an increase due to the um, two and a half percent that the town union received. Nothing new on town attorneys. We didn't do anything with annexation. You probably wonder why didn't we do that? Um, we've put typically in past years, we put as much as $20,000 in a line for, for annexation. It's because uh, some people refer to it as Indian affairs. And there's been things going on with the master tickets and the Eastern Pequots that we have to keep an eye on. Um, the Eastern Peak lots are looking to get um, recognized. They were recognized at one point and then that was removed and now they're looking to get recognized again. And the Master Tuckets, we just keep an eye on the land in our town to make sure that it ever doesn't go into trust land, which we becomes non-taxable. So why don't we put money in this fund? Uh, we work with a company called Perkins Cooey out of Washington, DC. Uh, everything they do with us now is by quote. So we know what the quotes are ahead of time. 
And uh, they felt that us, Preston and, and uh, Ledger, putting 5,000 in for now is fine. So that's what's in that budget. Uh, last one on this page, town clerk, um, 8,346. That's competitive salary increase. And also um, expenses that the town clerk's looking to, uh, had to put into the budget this year. B15, Economic Development Commission, a small increase, $465 due to increase in dues. The Recreation Commission, uh, that increase is $21,517, mostly due to increase in programs. We've done very well with some of the new programs like drama. And 9,195 of that is offset by revenue coming into the town. As we know, when, when people participate in these programs, they also pay for the programs. So. Um, We've had to add some uh, summer camp because that's taken off again, some summer, summer camp counselors. Uh, but that's what that's what most of that 21,517 is made of. And again, 9,100 of it is, is reimbursed to us through revenue. Fixed charges, uh, 91,766. This is really probably took our biggest hit this year in the budget. And most of that is due to increase in insurance. And also there's an increase in the pension. Um, we didn't incre it didn't increase the percentage. It's just what the pension is costing us this year. Those those uh, that add up to ninety one thousand seven sixty six. B twenty two town hall, um, three thousand three hundred and thirty four dollars. That's half of that is for expenses for town hall that have risen, and half is for the quarterly. If you're at the last board of finance budget meeting, they voted to put money back into the quarterly to make sure that we didn't have to go for an appropriation later on. So. I think that was a wise decision because we knew what it was going to cost us ahead of time. Uh, public safety was actually a $52,680 decrease, and that's because the trooper expenses had gone down and their fringe cost. And also, the, uh, we dropped the ambulance budget a little bit from last year, um, still getting more than they ended up. Last year, the budget for ambulance was $250,000. We got them to drop to two hundred seven dollars after the budget was passed. This year we went to 225, but it was 25,000 less than the, less than their initial ask. Uh, Public Works is on two lines. It's B27, Public Works Highway, and then Public Works Transfer Station, 9,062 in Highway, which is um, mostly town property maintenance, and then on the Transfer Station, 59,31075. And that's mostly because of tipping fees and contractor services. Um, as I said earlier, we're going to go to compactors, uh, hopefully sooner than set of later, where we'll be able to truck our own material. But right now, we depend on a company called Pacella, and they just double the, what it costs us to truck material. Um, senior Center, there's a uh, small increase of $1,630, which is due to contractual fees. Miscellaneous. An uh, increase of $35,000, which is the increase that was voted on for the library, or uh, real library. And B34, land use department, that's, um, we hired a full-time water and sewer analysis, an, an analyst. That was two years ago, and we were paying him out of some funds left over from um, some of the sewer studies we had done in the past. But that money's ran out now, so now this is an active line in the budget. So those increases give us a total of $232,991.75, which makes up the increase in the budget we spoke about earlier. On the capital expenditures, once again, the Board of Selectmen, we're, we're trying to get away from uh, leasing equipment. So every year when we go into capital, the first thing we have to do is address everything that we've already signed up on leases. And there's two leases right now. One's for the tractor mower for twenty-five thousand per year. This is the last year of that five-year lease. And then the North Sonton Volunteer Fire Company tanker. This is year set three of seven years at sixty-nine thousand nine seventy per year. So that has four more years to go after this. This being the last year for the tractor mower, this should be the we only I should have one year, one lease left in next year's budget. What we're trying to do is trying to be a little bit more fiscally responsible by putting money away ahead of time. So we're actually saving for something before we buy it. And some of those things are the bulky waste pile, we're putting 25,000 a year away because we know it's gonna cost us some serious money down the road. Transfer station compactor upgrades. We talked about moving that money from the walking floor trail over 57,450. 
You also need a rescue truck refurbished. If we bought a new rescue truck, uh, that truck's about 20 years old. It'll cost us 1.7 million. We hope to get it refurbished for around 300,000. So we put away $75,000 towards that this year. And their service truck, which is about 55,000, we put $25,000 away for that this year. So that's what makes up our two budgets of capital and government operating. And if there's any questions, uh, and uh, any line item I missed, I'd be glad to go through it with you. If not, I'll turn it back over to Mike Anderson. Hearing none, Michael. Oh. And I would have been disappointed. Go ahead. And you're going to need the microphone. Right there, you can stand. You just have to get a little bit closer to it, man. Like this, tuck. Perfect. Chew it up. <laughs> and no log, Northwest Carter Road. Uh, the one I have showing to me right now, is this Cheryl Consalvich getting a, a salary reduction? No, she isn't. Somebody. She's getting actually the. The LU administrator. Assistant is going down from 51,304 to 49,800. Actually, so I can let Kristen explain. Actually, it was put in. She actually got an increase, but it was put in last year's budget with the wrong figure, which was caught after the budget had gone through. So she was paid the right amount of money, right amount of money last year, but in last year's budget, it was represented with the wrong number. I can't tell what you said, but you got it. I said so. Uh, she got paid the correct amount. It's not going down. She's getting an increase. But in last year's budget, after it passed, we realized that the wrong number was in the budget, and we corrected it. But it was after the budget had already passed. So she's not. She's not getting in. in she's getting an increase, not a decrease. Okay, that's better. I heard you. Um. So you are working on funds to buy trucks, and there was one group that had. Their trucks were getting older. Was it the fire department or the town, the highway? Uh, highways they, trucks were getting on. Um, reserve, they were, they were. Yeah, so we pushed the um, we pushed uh, one of the highway trucks till next year, the uh, the loader, uh, and then uh, we hope to put some money away from that starting next year. You know, that'll be a, we'll get that truck in two years. Well, well worth it. She does above and beyond what she's expected to do. I agree. Because she's happy. I hope so. Yes. Thank you. I think she does a great job. Any other questions? Jason? Oh, just question. No, we'll do public comment at the end. So, questions on my budget and then. You can have questions for Christine and Troy after they present, and then we can do public comment at the end. Perfect. Is that what you wanted to do? Okay, perfect. No other questions for Bob is related to the budget itself? If it's if it's just a if it's just about a support or or you know a comment against, we'll just hold that to the end. Thanks, Bob. Troy? Good evening. Um, the North Stonington uh, Board of Education budget, uh, give a brief summary, uh, and I, I'm sorry to repeat, How's that? Okay, good, thank you. Um, so uh, the Board of Education budget uh, has gone through uh, multiple steps and this being the next one. 
So I appreciate everybody being here to hear about it. And I apologize for those of you who've heard multiple times the same message I'm about to give. Uh, if we could go to the next slide, please. Uh, the Board of Education uh, voted on these three goals to be worked on over the next three years, including this one. And basically, it's we want everybody to feel safe, valued, and a sense of belonging. We want kids to learn through innovative instruction. And we want to develop and implement efficient and transparent processes. And we believe this budget helps us to do those things. And we believe we're already working, we definitely were already working on these goals uh, quite strongly this year. Uh, so you'll see some of that. Uh, you know, one of the things we do is define a purpose for, for what we do in education. And our purpose is defined by our vision of a graduate. We're preparing all students to take their place as culturally and globally competent citizens. There's a series of skills that we really focus on. Um, and what we're doing is preparing future citizens of North Stonington and other towns, other states, other countries uh, to, be, to be successful wherever they may land. Uh, let's go to the next slide, please. The, we had several budget challenges in preparing the budget this year. Uh, there is an, an inflation, and with that, we negotiated a new teacher's contract um, in the, the beginning part of the year, and uh, we have to pay for that contract, right? But all towns are in the same boat with that. Our teachers actually got a little bit less than the state average uh, when we're negotiating it, um, but they still got a significant increase of 11.61 over three years. So that's, you know, close to 4% per year. So we have to pay for that. If we didn't do that, the teachers would leave and go elsewhere, right? And we have great teachers and we do want to keep them and pay them, you know, what they're worth. And again, less than the state average they got, uh, but they're happy. Uh, and North Stonington is a great place to work. We also have a new paraprofessional and custodian maintenance contract. We have increased supplies uh, cost and utility cost. Um, there's increased social, emotional, and behavioral needs of students. I'm not sure you all know that, but uh, all schools are experiencing that. Um, and we have, to, we have to deal with that. We have younger kids coming to school with uh, less executive functioning skills, less ability to have, exhibit self-control and deal with structure, be able to be organized and plan ahead. Uh, so we have to help kids more who need that help. And that requires people. And you'll see that in the budget. Also, you know, our, academically, we do quite well. Uh, in North Stonington, but our fitness scores are dramatically low compared to our academic scores. And we, we need to deal with that. And you'll, you'll see uh, some ideas about how uh, we're gonna deal with that. Let's go to the next slide, please. I think a overall um, theme uh, I really believe and I feel uh, is collaboration with the town. I, I, think, um, I think we're at a really strong point in terms of collaboration. Uh, one of the things uh, that was already mentioned is that the schools work extra hard to bring tuition revenue into the town, directly to the town, addition of $190,000. It's over $300,000 total coming into the town next year from kids from other towns choosing to go to Wheeler. Uh, the use of space, obviously we share spaces and, and we're, we're very thankful to be able to have use of several spaces within this building. And yes, we do pay a, a portion of the utility bill, as compensation for that, but that's a really good deal for us and we appreciate that. Uh, and we're gonna be developing another program here next year within this budget and we'll talk about it later. The non-lapsing fund you may have heard about, the Board of Ed has been very responsible. Uh, they did have some money in there from the last couple of years because we've had significant COVID relief grant money over the last few years. And that's, that's a major reason, it's health savings and some transportation savings as well, but that's not gonna continue to go on. The COVID grant money is ending after next year. Okay, so uh, there was money in the account. The Board of Ed is, is spending it wisely. They have ideas how to spend it further. Uh, maybe a maintenance shed across the street uh, for, for efficiencies of snowblowers and lawnmowers and that type of thing. Uh, it, let's go on to efficiencies. We've saved probably that are not in this budget, about $100,000 that we did not put in the budget because we absorb the grounds function. 
into our maintenance and custodial department. We're going to see how that goes. I think we can do it. Sub calling. We don't contract out anymore. We do it internally. That saves us significant funds. Uh, evaluation of teachers. We use Google Docs now instead of paying for a, a very expensive program. So we didn't have to put that in the budget. Technology support. We contracted with Learn in the past for help. We reallocated our two people moving one across the street this year for increased efficiencies and they're doing a better job and getting it done with what we have. So we've done a lot to be efficient. We had a free safety audit from Kermer, our, our insurance company, and they made some recommendations to increase, increase safety. Let's go to the next slide, please. I, I point this out to you here because I want you to see how the budget evolved. I want you to see the things that we want, the things that we need that we're not getting. I presented a 6.7% increase budget initially to the Board of Education. That's the superintendent's budget. These are, these are all the things that the Board of Ed took out. Some of the ones, the ones in black, Innovative Instruction PD, went to the NLA non-lapsing account. Okay, just abbreviate it, non-lapsing account. They, they decided to spend wisely money of non-lapsing account to support Innovative Instruction. That's our second goal, right? And it's in the non-lapsing account. The other one's some sports uh, money uh, for supplies and equipment, some steam to support the elementary school uh, initiative there for um, integrate, interdisciplinary instruction. And the, and the wood shop money, they moved to non-lapsing account. All the other ones, though, they, we, we got rid of. Like you can see like the second one on the, well, 10% reduction, reduction in supplies. Oh, you can't. Well, I'm sorry, that is so small. I can't just make it bigger right now. Um, I wish I could. So, all right, I'll read them to you. Okay, good idea. Instructional supplies were redu reduced across the board by 10%, right? It saved like $46,000. We wanted to address the fitness scores by adding a PE teacher slash Dean of Students to the elementary school help with behavior, okay? We cut it, $55,000, okay? We're gonna do it in a different way. Um, if you hit forward on that, will, will something appear? Or will it go to the next slide? Ah, look at that, see? So we're gonna address that need thinking differently, okay? We're gonna have more structured recess, more movement breaks within classroom. We're gonna see how that goes. We'll see how the scores uh, change. And the need for a dean, we're gonna look for teacher leaders to see if they can maybe do some types of internships, people who are working on their administrative license and that type of thing. So we have some ideas about that, how to meet that need differently. Uh, so some of the other things we eliminated, sports transportation reduced a little bit. We think we can absorb that. Uh, workshops, that's when people, uh, teachers go out to workshops out of district, reduce that a bit. Negotiation line, we reduced a little bit. Um, we had a, a miscount in the paraprofessional, number of paraprofessionals initially. That's why minus 23,000 there. It's just for the salary, not the benefits of the paraprofessional. Uh, so that was reduced. So we, we reduced it by a little over $215,000 as it went from superintendent budget to board of ed budget. Let's go to the next slide, please. So the board of ed budget was 5.24 when it came to the board of finance and they wanted us to reduce it further. Okay, we already heard about the, you know, the one third, two thirds budget cut. The Board of Selectmen uh, were the heroes for us and they took a little bit more than we did. So they actually did more of the two thirds and we did more of the one third. I don't know, don't hold me to that exactly, but they took more than we did. We only cut 121,000 out of our budget and basically eliminating one bus. So we go from 13 to 12 buses. We don't know the full impact of that yet. We're still figuring that out, but we believe that could be done. And we had two additional paraprofessionals for the elementary school to help with those executive functioning skills that we're moving to a grant. It's a, it's a COVID relief grant that runs out next year. So we'd have to move those paras if we still need them to the regular board of ed budget the following year. But those two cuts bring us to the 121, 191 cut. So therefore the revised budget 
is just over 15 million. And so the increase is six, 640,000 with a percent increase of 4.41. Let's go to the next slide. So what do we get? What are the impactful budget additions? Uh, you saw a lot of what we wanted initially that we're not getting, but there were some things that were real priorities and we said, we're gonna die on this hill because we're gonna get a social worker. We have one overworked, we're gonna get another one. We need it to deal with the, the anxiety, the depression, the, the, the mental health needs, okay, of students and their families, by the way. Social workers are designed to work with families and our social worker needs some help to do that. So that is in this budget, that's in the revised budget. We also have some help to get some curriculum written. Quality, you need to be able to show your public and your teachers and everybody, what are you teaching, how are you teaching it, and how you know they learned it. That's called curriculum. You gotta have curriculum documents and we're working on that project. And if we wanna get, be the first district in the state of Connecticut to have the accreditation, district accreditation from the New England Association of Schools and Colleges, NEASC, a lot of people call it, we need to have some support in writing curriculum. Most district, a lot of districts have a, full-time person as a curriculum coordinator, okay? So we think we can do it with a few teacher leaders with a, a little bit of a stipend. This is really exciting, the next two things. And this is, has to do with the shared space. We piloted a alternative education program this year. It was highly successful. We have some kids who will probably graduate high school this year and probably would not have had they not spent some time on this side of the road in a quieter setting with less distractions and getting a lot of work done with some help. By adding a special education teacher and a paraprofessional, we can formalize that program and really get that going, okay? And that some of our kids that just need that kind of support. And I'm really excited to be able to, to do that in this budget. Let's go to the next slide. Uh, just in case you were wondering, our enrollment's not declining. Um, and we are the North Stonington kids or the red dot, but above there's a gray line that includes the tuition kids and the projected tuition kids over the next 10 years. Okay, so uh, we're not going down um, at all. We're very stable, in case you were wondering. Next slide, please. So I know this is really small, I apologize. All this is, and it's in budget documents, is the last nine years of budget increases for the Board of Ed. But I'll tell you, I just tell you the average is 1.5% over the last nine years. And for a sense of comparison, that I was just looking to compare something, so I chose Social Security cost of living adjustment over the last nine years, averages 2.7%, okay? Board of Education budget, 1.5%. Social Security, 27 Just looking for a sense of comparison. So, you know, if that means anything to you. Also, if you look at the Board of Education uh, budget over the last 10 years, you got 0.34%, 0.15%, 0.91, zero, 4.97, there's a bump. It noticed that was in the fifth year. All right, and then they'll go back. All right, 1.93, I'll call it low. Uh, 2.5, I'll call that low. 1.13, 1.74. Okay, so let's see that one, two, three, four. Oh, this would be year five, time for a bump. Okay, so a little bit, you know, we wanted, we wanted 6.7, okay? Please give us this four point. Four one. Okay, we need more. Okay, we're going to be innovative. We're going to be creative. We're going to get the job done. Okay, with the four point four one, but you need to give it to us. Let's go to the next slide. So why? Because students experience an individualized and enriching education in North Stonington. They have success. They have success in sports, cheerleading, drama, music, etc. They travel different places around the world. We just got a trip, uh, kids came back from Bermuda just a few days ago. We're gonna open the wood shop and we're gonna do it in a modern way. And we're gonna do it within this 4.41% budget. And we're gonna have materials processing and design. You know, EB is hiring people that need, they have, they need, they have to have skills, right? Where are they gonna get it? 
They're going to get it here. High, the high school has a capstone senior project. They have pathways in business, engineering, and now education. Pretty safe school and community. Preston and Voluntown, students want to come. We have the highest eighth grade science scores in the state. Did you know that? Highest in the state of Connecticut. Eighth grade science scores. Pretty impressive. Dedicated staff. People stay. Pretty much, they stay. Did you know that we have the Connecticut High School Principal of the Year for 2023 in Christian St. Germain? Okay, that is a quality school system. We're, we are pursuing district NEASC accreditation and we have a strong school system that translates into a strong town. Okay, we can get into all of these of that, but that's how it works. And I think we, we have to, we have an opportunity. We can do some real things to even strengthen our already strong schools within this budget. And we shouldn't let this opportunity pass us up. Thank you. We'll take uh, questions from the audience specific to uh, the Board of Education budget, please. Just let us know who you are and okay, Elaine Carlson. I've had several students come through Wheeler and now I have my grandchildren here. And I'm really happy to hear the innovative approaches that you're taking to uh, solving some of these issues and problems. So it's very exciting to me to hear that. And I'm very, very encouraged. I wanted to mention something about transportation. I, I think my street is the last stop. Sorry. I think my street is the last stop on the way to the school. Seems like these giant buses always look very empty. So my request would just be to do, I, and, and plus I've, I've noticed after school that there are parents just lined up in cars to pick up kids. So what I would like to see happen is to do a census of how many kids are actually on these giant buses. And perhaps we could save a lot of money by using minivans instead of buses because it's a small town with small numbers. And I just was wondering if that could save a huge amount of money. Troy, yeah. you want me to answer any? You want to talk about it? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Um, so just to reply to that, the Board of Ed is looking at doing a full transportation study um, moving forward, hopefully starting late spring into the summer. And we're going to be looking for a lot of community input on that. We don't want the, that to be specifically a Board of Ed driven study, but we want to make that something where we get input from the community. So there will be a lot more coming on that. It is a very large line item for us. And, and we see exactly what you see as well. A lot of empty buses, a lot of parent pickup. Um, a lot of that came out of uh, the pandemic. Once parents got accustomed to doing that, getting them to go back to transportation has been a challenge. Um, but I, I think the time is to kind of review that and the bus company we're working with is very open to working with us in any capacity as well. So, um, definitely more to come on that sooner instead of later. Hey, Berardi, uh, Connie Berardi, uh, Pine Woods Road. Uh, informational question for myself. Out of the 785 students, how many are elementary, middle, and then high? Top of my head, I don't have the exact numbers and I don't I don't have it right. And can is it right possible? Here, to but it's it's approximately 55 students per grade level. Starting uh, from elementary up? Yeah. Is there a way I could get a breakdown by by grade at some point if I talk to you? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, you could you if you wanted to email me, I'll send you that data. Okay. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Yeah. And please. I'll walk again. I don't have kids in the school system, but that's okay. Is that you kissing the pig? Uh, no, I, it's not in my job description. That's more of a principal thing. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm anyway, glad I'm not a principal I, anymore. 
people say they're glad you're here, so that's good. Well, thank you. I'm concerned about the students that are coming to you ill-prepared to be in school. Do you need to reach out to the parents and have something town-wide to tell their parents how to get their kids ready for school? Yeah. Uh, I mean, the more and more is having to be done by the school yeah. that the parents are not doing. And yeah. I'm also concerned with the ones that need so much yeah. guidance and support, and that's yeah. Distressing nationwide. So, so thanks for doing that. Yeah, yeah, and 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 yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a valid question. Um, we do work with families very closely, and uh, you know, sometimes it's just a matter of uh, you know de delayed maturity, and you know, usually all kids are going to be fine. They just need a little extra help along the way sometimes, um, and that's why though we're going to have two extra paraprofessionals in the kindergarten and first grade area to help with those needs. That th that was a priority in the budget. Those are the two going into the ESSER grant next year that we have to put into the regular budget the following year if we still need them, probably will. Yeah, but we do work with families. And it's not like the families aren't doing their job or anything or don't know how. It's sometimes some some kids are just a handful no matter what parents they have. And, and, it, and Should they be the delayed in coming or you have to go by the calendar? They're old enough to go. They have to go. You can't say it, 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 he's it, really it's not a little ready. flexibility that pa parents have a choice when when to bring their kid into kindergarten. There's a little bit of a choice there for parents, depending on the age, the birthday of the child. Um, and, you know, some parents decide to keep a child home another year and, and some send them. So uh, Connecticut actually has one of the earliest ages that allows kids to go to kindergarten in the whole country. And there's, there's a lot of discussion at that uh, about that at the state level to change that. If, if they start out behind, they're always behind. It's hard to catch up. It, it can be. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Sarah Nelson, 362 Denison Hill Road. Thank you, Troy, for your presentation. Um, just a quick comment, not really a question, but I, I did it's, it's a little disappointed we we missed out on the second or the additional PE teacher. I think that's so important. And I know you mentioned you're going to look at things in a more innovative way. So I just wanted to put a plug. I know it's probably more of a Board of Ed find, me, meeting, but I have so many Board of Ed meetings. <laughs> so um, just want to put a plug in for looking at longer recesses. So there's so much data out there, right? Longer recesses, high, like higher test scores, better attentiveness in class. If we have low fitness levels, I could imagine more recess would be another benefit. So I just want to throw that out there. Thank you. Yeah, good, good idea. Thank you. We have an online hand from Jana. Go ahead and unmute. Hi there. I'm, I'm just curious, how many classes are being held across the street where you currently are? There are, there are no uh, full classes being held across the street. There are, there, are, are you using that building at all? We use the building for uh, a few students that need a choir, quieter setting. There might be like two or three students over here at a time uh, working with an adult. Um, and th this is a space that we th that the, the town has uh, given us to use and we do pay utility bill to use that space. Was there any remediation that happened in those buildings? Because when they were building the new schools, we were told that that building was just not safe. I can probably address that. Thank you, Mike. I, I can as well. Jonna, we had, there's certain parts of this, of the, the building over here at 298 uh, North Wesley Road. Um, some were worse than others the one that was the main concern is the middle school building which is the one that was was taken down um, as you guys can see now um this particular building in the middle was renovated in the 90s um this used to be the gym that we're in right now um so that's the as far as we know from doing the building the ad hoc building committee and in, in for doing the work on the building itself there was not really any hazmat concerns with this center portion where the central office is now. Um, this building, this room here, there's several classrooms 
in this particular area that are not necessarily a concern is for hazmat. So that's that's a very valid question because I, I think a lot of people have that um, concern. Um, the building that we're renting out right now is, you know, uh, is being rented to a private business, and so it's, there's no restrictions as to as to that occupancy as far as state law is concerned. So the building that that the kids are using here, and it's a program that Troy can speak to um, more deeply. That's the you know um, the alternative education program for uh, kids that are normally shipped out at a great expense. Um, to be uh, to have instruction elsewhere because they, they don't necessarily adapt to the to the school environment. They're being done in house at a great savings, and we hope to solidify that program. and And we have the space here, um, and we are keeping an eye on that as far as the board of finance and the board of selectmen as far as what you know the use of the building and any deterioration of the building, any kind of repairs that need to be done. But as far as safety is concerned. Um, having been on those committees, there, there was never a problem with this middle section. So there's, there's well, that seems a, a little bit different than what we were told when they were building or proposing the new school and that there would need to be significant remediation. So you're saying there's been no remediation. And, and my second question is the wood shop. Um, I, we were talking to Superintendent Nero when they were building the new schools about adding a wood shop like the importance of a tech ed program. And, and Nero was a former tech ed teacher who's now an administrator. So we thought he would understand that. Um, so um, I'm just curious, his, his response to us was, the program is too expensive. There's not enough students. There's not enough room in the school. So, but now you're trying to bring it back. And I'm just wondering how you're gonna do that. You know. My primary concern is North Stonington's a small school, and you're not going to have all the programs that a larger school may offer. So, where where would that woodshop program go? I'll take it. So, the the woodshop program uh, would be it would be it's actually partially in the new buildings across the street. We would call it. Uh, you know, materials processing and design classes where kids are actually, uh, you know, it's more modern than the regular workshop. They're actually designing on uh, computer uh, software um, different things that they will build. It may be 3D printing them even across the road at the new buildings and then coming over here and actually building the larger model of it, the actual thing. Um, so yes, they, they would be coming over here to do it. We already ha we have the teacher that used to run the wood shop still working with us and he's very excited to do it. It's not like we have to hire a new person and they have a plan to integrate it into the department at, at very low cost. In fact, the board of ed already decided to put some cost of that into the non-lapsing fund uh, to, to get the program going again. And, and I think that at, at that time, and you mentioned uh, you know the past superintendent, I think at that time, uh, given the information that was available and, and where we were, it, it, that was probably the best decision at the time. It's not like that was a bad decision at the time. That probably was the right decision given the information uh, that was available. Now we know uh, that kids, are, all kids that try to get into tech school don't get in. And there are kids that don't want to go to tech school that still want some hands-on skills. And, and that is just more obvious to us now as fewer kids actually are ta tackling on the, you know, the four-year college route. They have to have marketable skills when they graduate high school. And that's just more obvious now than it probably was five years ago when that decision was being made. So you always make the best decision with the information you have, the current information, and the best decision that we can make with our current information is to reopen that wood shop in a more modern way. And, and you have a budget for that? Yes, we do. The, the budget, the, the Board of Ed is using some non-lapsing funds to do that. We already have hired the teacher. We're not paying the teacher anymore to do it. Um, he's already doing some design work and some building across the road. They're just gonna have a adequate space to do it now. And the, the non-lapsing fund, that money, 
you keep on referring it to as is that a school fund is that taxpayer funded how what is the i'm, I'm just a little confused so, so what, what happened over the last few years is the board of education budget had some money left at the end of the year uh -huh. they're, able, they're able to put up to two percent of their budget into this non-lapsing fund if they have it in the last few years they had some money left so some significant funds went in there so the board of ed is trying to wisely spend that money without additional burden to the taxpayer but that it's it is taxpayer money yeah, that that you guys are keeping right that's correct because the, okay. the idea is the taxpayers already voted to, to give that money to education so we didn't spend it that last year or the year before but we're still going to spend it on education thank you yeah. thank you the um just to go on that point because i'm sure that this has been a point of contention over the budget process and i just want to just address it a little bit because it's a valid concern and the board of uh education approached the board of finance two years ago um because there's there's a state law that allows boards of education to maintain uh up to five percent You're not, you're not on there. So we came to you guys about three years, a little over three years three ago years now. Ago, right. I, at the time that we did it, it was uh, 2%. Right. At the time it was, they're allowed to maintain up to 2% of the, that year's budget uh, expenditures in a, a non-lapsing account. And the, and the reason behind it is to stop a process of trying to uh, buy items at the end of the year um, and to have the money in the account to, to buy them, buy products or buy supplies or buy new capital items when it's uh, fiscally responsible to do so rather than um, trying to get all your supplies at the end of the year. Because uh, a lot of times they don't know what they have, you know, what, what's required until the end of the year. And that's why the state allows boards of education to do this. Now the board of finance approved this. They have a policy regarding it, and um, it's not meant to be any kind of slush fund. It's meant to be used responsibly for educational items and educational items only. Right now, there's there's a certain amount in there because there was savings because of the COVID grant money that the board of education is now using for appropriate, you know, trying to use it appropriately to fund certain capital items. You don't put budgetary items in there that you're, that you're going to have every year uh, and use the non-lapsing account for that. You have, you're have you supposed to use it for more capital projects or one-time expenses. Um, but yeah, is it taxpayer money? It is, but it's it's the Board of Finance approved this policy and it, it is in effect and it's, it's uh, being used as it should be. Regarding your, your last other question about there is in this particular section of the building, there was probably improvements that needed to be done that was going to cost the town money. Same with the, the two story building, which had a lot of outdated equipment where NEASC wasn't going to give us uh, accreditation anymore because of how outdated all the facilities were, particularly in the sciences. The hazmat material was in the, in the middle school primarily, and that school has been taken down. And I just want to comment one other thing is they're, they're, they're using space over here because when we did the building project, the state only allows you to build so big. They don't want you to overbuild. You're not, they, they will hold money back. So when, when those schools, schools were built, they were, they were built, to, built to certain size standards. So we would get reimbursement back for, for keeping it at a certain building square footage. They happen to have room over here for a program where they need quiet separation from the normal uh, school population. And we're lucky to have this facility. We have I'm gonna, I'm gonna, go ahead. Is there a question for me? There's a question online. Okay, go ahead. If you're not done. Okay. Um, Kay Perez, you're recognized. Hi, uh, Carrie Perez, North Anguilla Road. Um, a few questions. I have uh, as for this alternative education program, 
how many students do you forecast will be involved in it? Does it meet state graduation requirements? Have they seen the program and have viewed it? And has our Board of Education actually seen the curriculum, the program in some type of codified way um, that can be reviewed? I'll start with that first. You can hop in if you like, but I'll start. Uh, we're projecting eight to 10 students in the alternative ed program. Um, and and um, the curriculum um, is gonna be the same as Wheeler curriculum. And, you know, it may need to be modified and a, a bit or big, and that's why we have a special education teacher we're looking to have because they're experts on modifying curriculum uh, to meet the individual needs of the students. It's gonna be a very individualized program to meet the needs of each kid. Uh, but yes, the curriculum, the base of the curriculum is the Wheeler curriculum. So it's not a separate curriculum. It's just learned in a different setting. Um, and we will keep the board apprised as we, you know, develop that program. Yes, it will meet graduation requirements. Um, and yeah, it, it, the, it's, it's gonna be a, a wonderful thing. And yes, we, we, we hope to actually save money, actually even next year, because we, uh, by, by doing this and having the social worker, we've actually budgeted less for outside services in this budget for next year. So we're already saving in some ways, but if we're able to have a student be educated in their hometown, instead of transporting them somewhere on a bus for 45 minutes or an hour away, twice a day, um, and paying for that transportation and paying a very large tuition, uh, we're gonna save money then as well. Um, so we don't know, we, we're pretty sure that will happen. It may not happen right away, but down the road, uh, I think it's a great investment. Uh, to make right now. I would like I just to want to add on that. Um, the Board of Ed is absolutely aware of the program. Uh, Allison Mullane, our special education director, did a wonderful presentation on that um, probably about two and a half to three months ago. What we can do is put the link for that presentation on the front of our bring that forward again on the front of our Board of Ed page. So anybody who would like to listen to it, uh, I think it would answer a lot of questions about that. Most districts have alternative education built into their school day for, the, for some of their children. We just don't have the space for it across the street. So we were outsourcing some of it. And she really felt like we could hit the needs of those children in their community here on campus by bringing them over a few hours a day over here to really specialize to their needs, but then also allow them to still be among their peer group in their community at the same time. So we are absolutely in support of that. Um, and, you know, Troy and Allison are obviously the experts on making sure that they're hitting all the state requirements and everything for those programs. I, I did watch that uh, presentation on, it's not fresh in my mind as I speak tonight, but um, my general impression at the time was there wasn't a lot of specifics to it. But um, nonetheless, what I do remember is what I, I believe that there was only on the pilot program like three students, and there were they were had uh, it was said behavioral issues. As far as the alternative education program itself, I'm gonna withhold judgment on it because I really don't know enough about it to formulate a strong opinion, but I do have a strong opinion as far as the use of the old building. Um, I have concerns as the previous caller did about the way it was presented to the town and it was a very divided issue for the town. I think that things are starting to heal over and to start utilizing that building again for both education reasons and for uh, a wood shop, which I understand is just gonna be an additional class, um, is really gonna rip the scab off of those wounds. Um, you know, at best I can say, I feel misled about that building uh, and, and the use of it. Um, so I, I'm not in support 
uh, as far as students that might have interest in the woodshop, we have the technology, the tech schools that are state of the art, full programs where somebody wanting to get into the trades could go to. I, I'm a little skeptical about one class, one additional class by Mr. Uh, Brandonini is going to get that student who's really interested into the tech into those trades without going to the tech school. That's my opinion. Um, so just, I'm, I'm not in favor of using the town's building. Uh, and more importantly, I talk about the behavior, perhaps potential behavioral issues of the um, alternative education. There's a security issue over there. We have now a private business into the school. Do they know that that building is gonna be utilized with high school students? And what is being done to address camera issues and security upgrades in that building now, if you are going to use it? All right, Kerry, this is Bob Carlson. Um... Yes, they are aware of it. They've already changed the locks and they have their own space. It's uh, it's can't be entered from this part of the building. Uh, so they they're aware of it. They uh, we've taken the proper steps to make sure that their their space is secured, and the um, and there's no issue. Thank you for your comments. Um, do we have any additional people online? Okay, Brian. Can you hear me? Oh, I yes. hear echo, so you must be hearing me. <laughs> What's uh, your name? Where are you from? Oh, yeah, I'm Brian Rathbone, 263 Grindstone Hill Road, North Stone. Troy, you've got a lot of enthusiasm. I'll give you that. Thank you. <laughs> I'm just faking it. Yeah. I being a woodworker, you know, I'm a woodworker and I'm a little apprehensive about having a wood shop over here too. Um, because I remember when the big deal would come across the street, we were told that um, when we asked about, oh, you're going to get rid of the wood shop, oh, well, we'll send it, we refer the kids to tech school, which at that point I thought it was a great idea because that's where they're going to be every day. Every day, running those tools, learning those tools. If the kid ain't going to run tools every single day, I think we're going, we're going backwards. Um, also, was in the original plan that the tunnel was going to be closed because they wanted, they wanted all the students on the other side. That's the reason, at least the big reason I understood that we wanted a new building across the street. The other, the other que uh, question actually I got is you got, uh, let's see, let's, oh, <laughs> good one again. <laughs> I know you don't have to get far from it. Um, the social worker, now you're going to have a social worker with two paraprofessionals, para is that what you're getting with, for so, the social worker? In, in the budget itself is a social worker and uh, a special ed teacher and one paraprofessional in the budget, additional in the budget. There's two other paraprofessionals that are in a COVID relief grant that's not in the budget. Okay, so it, so when that grant is gone, are they, are they, are they gone or are they going to stay? Potentially although we may propose to put them in the budget the following year, and then the Board of Ed could decide to support that. And if they do, the Board of Finance could decide to support it, it or either board could decide not to support that. Uh, so it really depends on student needs. We have to monitor how our students are doing and what they need. All right, so, it, so the um, social worker, now that will give you two? Yes, it will, two full time. Right. Now, do we really need to? Uh, all the professional opinions uh, of the people working in this district say yes, we, we need the two. I kind of understand that they would say yes. Well, they, well if, you, if, you, if you look at the needs, we've had more um, 
more crises uh, for students this year than every other year, any other year. Um, you know, we have, we have families that are trying to figure out how to work with their children. Social workers are specifically trained for that. Uh, our, our, our families need another social worker. Our kids need another social worker. And the, the impact of not getting another social worker could be real tragedy. And we don't, we want to be proactive. Well, I understand you, you want another one. Yeah. But, uh, Brian, our, our current social worker is carrying a caseload on average of 80 students. And that's because of the pandemic, you said, during the... Well, that's what the reality is today. Okay. So I'm sure there's going to be a time when they catch up or that evens out. Well, and we'll address that when that time comes. Right now, we are not in that time. Right now, we are in a time where our social worker is burning out quickly. Finding social workers is difficult. You know, we're concerned about even being able to draw one, to get one at this point. But right now, it is, in, it is a crisis. It's incredibly important that we take the emotional health of our students very, very seriously. And we find that this is critical. When we had the budget presented to us, Troy said, this is a position he is not going to move on. We need this. He's the expert in education. He's the expert in our students. And I'm going to trust him 100% on that decision. Okay. I just want to make sure that when it goes through, or if it goes through, I got the money in my pocket to pay for all this. That's all. I don't want to see just adding on and adding on, and then next year you forget it, and then boom, next thing you know, the budget's way up again. I agree with you 100%, and, and I think that we have the right person in the position for that to continually monitor what our needs are and adjust accordingly. Okay, I can trust you on that now. All right, thank you. I trust you too. Thank you. Uh, Kathy White from North Westerly Road. Um, my husband and I Sorry. My husband and I both went to Wheeler, and then I went to a trade school. Both our children graduated here, but my son went to a trade school. And I was part of that meeting probably about five or six years ago, and I was for bringing the trades back because I feel like not every child is going to go to college. They do. We need trades. I'm happy to hear that the woodshop's coming back, but I do have concerns because how many days a week are they going to be on it? And second of all, to see it finally come back, I don't want to see five, 10 years from now. And then I was told that it was taken out of it because we couldn't afford the shop. Back then we had a um, metal shop. We had a home ex. So if you bring something back, I don't want to see something from five or 10 years that it can't be afforded in the budget because you're just hurting the children. That, that, that's my major concern because that's what it was originally. All these were taken out because we couldn't afford it. So... I, I think right now there's tremendous support uh, to get the shop program up and running again. Um, and uh, I, I see it as a long-term uh, initiative. I really do because we're modernizing it as well. We're not just bringing back a traditional wood shop where you build a birdhouse and hanging out a tree in your backyard. Uh, it's, it's tied in with computer aided design and 3D printing, and it, it, it's part of a whole curriculum of the technology department, and, and it will give kids skills. So it's not, it's not just a hands-on piece. It's the computer piece, too, the kids are learning. And even if kids go into auto mechanics, they have to know the computer piece, right? A lot of the trades now, you have to know computers, too. My son is in auto. He graduated from Grasso, and they got him his job in his junior year because he was top of his class. He would have graduated here, but he was hands-on. So what, and that's what I'm asking you. I hear you have, they're designing over there, but is the shop teacher is going to take them with their designs and then they're going to, some of the teachers. And they're going to build it. They're going to build it. Is it five days a week? Oh, it, 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 it uh, it's a full-time class. So yes, it would be, well, uh, with the, with the block scheduling, it's every other day because okay. it's in 84 minute blocks, right? So the class, so it's every other day class. It's so a full-time class. So when they graduate, they're going to have that certificate, and that, that's what I'm getting at. They're going to have that certificate to be able to. I don't know what certificates they're going to have at this point in time. Probably the teacher could probably talk okay. more uh, specifically about that. But um, certainly, yeah, if kids can graduate with a certificate and we can do it, we'll do it. But we, we have to figure that out. And one of the other things right now that they're doing is a lot of set design for drama. And they're building it on the stage, which isn't ideal. 
Um, it's not a stage isn't a wood shop. It's not made for that. So this would allow them to do work that they're already doing, but they would be able to use this facility. And we readdressed it because we heard strongly from the community that they were upset that we got rid of wood shop and that they wanted it back. And then we're hearing this movement towards it. So I think it's really important when a decision is made that we don't kind of rest on our laurels and say, well, that decision was made, we're never changing it. It's important that you always revisit, open your mind, look at what's what's happening in the day. And right now there is a resurgence of these things. And like my daughter's not interested in going to tech school, but she's interested in taking woodshop. Just like saying if somebody's going to tech school, they shouldn't take a science class. That doesn't really make sense to me. So if we have an opportunity, we still do have a facility available. Our tech uh, ed teacher has reviewed it and found that it isn't going to be a burden to us financially at this point, that we feel it's a viable option. That's what we're looking at doing today. One more question. Are we using the old equipment that is down in the old workshop, or do you have to purchase new equipment? Great question. I was going to just have a comment on that. Yeah, uh, right now, uh, the equipment that we have seems like it, it's been tested and it, it functions well. Um, if we need new equipment, uh, then, you know, we could probably get, we'll get new equipment as we need it. But right now, uh, it's all been tested and so far, everything's looking okay. Uh, but, but, you know, that could change and then we'll, we'll, we'll deal with that. But we're, like, we're very fortunate because a lot of schools just stop the shop program and take everything out. And then they just have this empty room. And if they wanted to bring it back, it's going to be huge cost. We, we, we have the setup. We you know, might as well do it because it, they, there's an interest within the student body right now. There's like 20 some kids in that set design class right now. And, and more kids want it. You heard Christine Wagner's daughter would like to, to have a shop opportunity, learn some hands-on skills. A lot of kids are like that. Elaine Carlson again. I just want to add a quick statement about that. My youngest son that graduated in 2013, he built all kinds of great stuff. It was so important to him to have that wood shop. It was really instrumental in, in his development. And I think regarding the old building versus the new building, you know, I had those reservations myself, but yet this is a new day. We've been through COVID. We need to stop looking in the past. We need to move forward. And I really like your ideas. I think it's great to open up the wood shop. It's sitting there. We might as well use it. We need to have common sense. And if we have the portions of the building that are safe, then we need to use them. Let's forget the past. Let's move forward. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else online, Christine? No. Pat? Pat Lewis, Bloombridge Road. Um, I have, um, if you go online, you, you'll see the presentation by the shop teacher. And he did an excellent job uh, in presenting that. He uh, said they also received, I think it was 12,000 grant to help get it started as well. And he said something, I don't recall exactly, but something about he teaches, he teaches CAD. So, and that's what EB is looking for with, with new employees coming on board. So um, he was very enthusiastic and excited about starting this program. So I think it's really going to <clears throat> be a plus for, for us. Oh my, um, I am in support of all the extra staff that you're hiring, but I do have some reservations and I hope that we will revisit this next year because with each of those staff members, we have to give benefits and retirement and raises and is it gonna come to a point that it's not sustainable for our town. <clears throat> um, I had a question about, we used to have, um, and I didn't question this until several years ago, we used to have permanent substitute teachers as part of our budget. And I don't know if we have those anymore or if they're included right in, in the budget as regular teachers. We do, we do have them, they're not in the budget as regular teacher though. But where are they on here? In the substitute teacher line, right? So. I see per diem substitutes, middle school, high school, and elementary. But I thought they come to school every day like a regular teacher. 
Anyway, so the permanent but staff. But they paid per day. So they're that's what the per diem they're means. Needed, so they're needed or not, correct? They're needed every day. Always needed. Needed every day. But they do come every day and they aren't part of the teacher's contract. Okay. So um, those are for all middle school, high school, and elementary. Okay. But they do come every day. And so when you don't need them, what you say, you do need them every day? Yes, we do. If they don't need them every day, then. We, we, we need them every day. So you have somebody out every day. Okay. Um, we have a lot. We have a large staff. If you look at the probabilities of it, and and our our staff not a, are not out more than other towns. If you if you look at the statistics, it's just. But if you look at the probability of personal time, sick time. Well, I know. I think know, that needs to be because it's just supposed people. to have, be in class 180 days a year, and how many of the teachers and staff are out? Or how many how many days a year do these kids have the same person teaching them? Anyway, that's another issue that we want to address right away. Um, so last year, um, they approved $25,000 for books. And I, I had a hard time deciphering pluses and minuses and all this other stuff. So I was wondering, do you have a guess as to how many dollars were spent on hardcover books versus software construction computers that they're using for learning these kids? I could tell you that um, we bought some hardcover books for AP Biology. Uh, AP Biology, Advanced Placement Biology class that kids can get college credit for. We use Neil Campbell's biology book, um, and it's a hardcover book. It's very expensive, it's, uh, and so I know we purchased that hardcover book. Uh, other hardcover books, I don't know of any that we did. We may have purchased some. I don't, you know, I don't have that off the top of my head. I know we've purchased a lot of paper by, paperback novels uh, for, to support English curriculum and kids' uh, choice in reading. Um, I'm sure we purchased some hardcover books for the libraries, uh, but I, I don't have all of our stats that we you would like right here. On your media specialist, so you have one for the elementary school and and the two part time ones, one for middle school and one for high school, or is it the same person that's just? And we have two separate people. One one is full time at the elementary school, and one is full time at the middle school high school. But they share. The middle school, high school shares one person, one full-time person. Um, and we've always supported our schools and we've always had students here have gone on to attend prestigious colleges and military academies and pursued rewarding careers. Um, we've always supported the schools and we've supported the government as budgets as well. And we've supported kids who come out from shop classes and work with their hands and their minds. Um, but the Board of Finance, you are the stewards of our town and tax. So don't strap the residents who have lived here and supported the town and the schools with new taxes, use the designated funds instead of increasing the mill rate. Thank you. Any other questions or comments for either the Board of Selectmen or the Board of Education? Thank you, Troy. You can do the next one. All right, um, I think it's uh, kind of apropos that after Pat's comment um, regarding the undesignated fund balance, you know, just talk about, and does everyone have the, the handout or the, on, the, on the final page, you'll, you can see for information purposes only really kind of a breakdown um, of, uh, I guess the uh, credits and debits here. So we have total approved expenditures of 22 million five eighteen eight thirty six. Um, revenue. When you see the asterisks there, uh, and if you look at um, 
on this last page, the tax rate in mills, just for information purposes only, it's not part of the budget. I wanna just stress that. Uh, using a 28.99 mill rate uh, brings you to that total revenue of 22,519,559. So you, the uh, delta there is a revenue surplus of $723, which goes into the uh, back into the undesignated fund at the present proposed budgets we have here today. Um, just for informational purposes, outstanding debt so far right now has been going down. We had 25 million and change last year. We're at 24 million, 323,605 that we're covering uh, with our uh, the debt uh, redemption that we have in this budget. Um, debt service to expenditures is 6.14%. It's uh, pretty small. The undesignated fund right now uh, is at $2,390,383. Um, the percentage of fund balance to the expenditure budget is 11.05%. And as uh, in Bob's presentation, he, he mentioned during the COVID years, uh, we did use undesignated fund uh, money to um, to balance the budget significantly, it was four, you know, four hundred thousand um, dollars, and then we did it again. And in the last two budget cycles, we've had to absorb those costs because you, you know, you're using, you're basically borrowing from your your your, your piggy bank to to pay for the expenditures, and at some point, you have to fill that gap. And we did; we filled the gap, and you know, we used that money when it was appropriate. When it was needed, and we when we did the reval, we were able to to get that money back, and actually gave a small decrease to the mill rate last year. So we're two eight two twenty eight point four five uh, presently. So this budget does cause uh, you know a slight uh, increase to the to the mill rate, but it's uh, we feel it's appropriate and nom and and uh, that's why you move these budgets forward. Um. Let's go to that last page. Uh, just for future considerations that the Board of uh, Finance are, are thinking of, one is obviously the capital needs of the town. Uh, it was a, a, a large part of discussions this year. Um, and there were questions that were in the audience regarding, you know, the the need, the capital needs of the town, you know, with regard to particularly the, the public works uh, and the fire uh, volunteer fire company, uh, the board of finance uh, and the board of selectmen are, are very cognizant of, of the needs. Um, it was, uh, there was, you know, one, one item was taken out because we need to, we're trying to uh, maintain uh, the, uh, a, a less tax burden on on the taxpayers, uh, but we are going to have to probably put more money into the into the capital budgets in in the future years if we want to be fiscally responsible. And we are, as a board of finance, going to be addressing those after the budget season uh, this summer, uh, and in conjunction with the board of selectmen and departments, and trying to get a real comprehensive capital plan. Um, but it's going to hurt. And I think we all have to realize that um, we've we've done some some putting off of of necessary uh, capital improvements or, or or savings. So we're buying versus leasing. So that's one consideration that we will be talking about um, over the next year, and um, so we've got to be prepared for it next budget cycle. Going back to the undesignated fund. I want everyone to know that the, the present balance that 11.05% uh, um, seems low to, uh, to most people who know where, where our designated fund has been uh, historically. We, you know, that's kind of our, it's, it's indicative of, of our ability to, to go to the debt market 
Um, you know, if you have a good savings account and you've got, you know, some liquidity, it helps when you're trying to go out and get, get money in the debt market. The, the, the 2 million 383 does not uh, reflect, we have reimbursable appropriations that we did last fall. Um, it was um, discussed with the Board of Selectmen and uh, thoroughly vetted through the Board of Finance. Uh, we have short-term debt that um, should be paid by what we're being reimbursed by the state for the building project. The state's a little bit behind. So rather than, uh, than uh, keep borrowing against that short term, which would cost the town more money, we actually paid that short term debt off with the undesignated fund. Uh, that's approximately 975,791. So we put that forward to a town vote and the vote and the town did vote to, to do that because we are gonna be reimbursed. So that 2,393.83 does not reflect 975,791 going back to de undesignated fund when it comes from the state. We also um, had a steep grant that we, we had to expend the funds uh, and then we're gonna get the money back through the, the steep grant of 395,603. So again, the, the undesignated fund is, is about a million dollars higher, should be higher than what it's presently is. Um, that being said, we, we're still above what the Board of Finance has established as a policy uh, for the minimum level of the undesignated fund, which is 8.5%. If it ever got down to that, we would have to do uh, some type of measures to get that back up. Uh, the maximum we have is, I believe, 17.5% as a, as a ceiling. So um, we're in good fiscal shape. And um, we thank the uh, Board of Selectmen and the Board of Education uh, for all the hard work that they did. Again, we did move these budgets forward to this hearing uh, unanimously. And um, we thank you for your feedback. And the next process is the Board of Finance will meet on uh, Wednesday to uh, talk about any additional things we wanna change. Uh, if you do have additional comments, or suggestions, now is the time. Um, so last call for questions or comments before we adjourn. Uh, name's Christopher Books, uh, Nine Overlook Road West. Uh, I just wanna thank the boards who all put together their um, budgets. I think the town has actually done like a really good job to to put that put forth something that can help maintain the quality that we have here in West Arlington. You know, I, you know, as a young man, I abused a lot of the things that I had, like probably many of us do. And when you don't take care of something, you know, you really end up losing the value in it. And I feel that the town should choose to move forward with these budgets to preserve that quality rather than to watch it slowly slip away. Thank you. Thank you. Brian, you had some additional comments. Brian Rathlin, 263 Grindstone Hill Road. Um, I know one thing the Board of Finance did since the last time I was here is they added back into the different ones that, uh, let's see, what was the number one? B 2316. Um, they were mostly just giveaway money, I call it, you know, for fun, just give people, you know, different groups money. Um, Brian, I can, I can help you out with that. <laughs> paper by my truck. We, the. It was for all the different places that right. asked for money from the town. Right, we're talking about Pawkatuck Neighborhood Center, Women's Center all and Safe Futures, TVCCA. United Community and Family Services. KNSA, um, Conservation Commission. There's a lot of those, are, well, not not so much the Pork Dog Neighborhood Center, but the um, a lot of the commissions in our town are not, uh, they're just advisory boards. I don't know why they need to put extra money back in there. Um, but the Board of Finance decided to put it back in. 
And I know the Board of Selectmen had had lowered that because you asked them to lower their budget for the Board of Finance. And I don't understand why the Board of Finance would want to put it back in. Me, myself, um, the KNSA, uh, I don't agree with changing deeds and things like that. And they do that. And they don't, they don't have to ask the town. That kind of bothers me because that's, that's money coming out of my pocket. It's taxpayer money. Which which um, department is that you're talking about? B twenty three sixteen. And uh, even even the even the, the conservation commission is um, that's an advisory board. You have to go through. The board of finance from what i understand i don't i didn't really see it but brian i, I if you if i may can i i'll just clarify you know as far as b2316 keeping north stones and affordable their budget's flat um we didn't address that at all at the last meeting the specifically uh the board of selectmen based upon our request to reduce funds uh took out twenty five hundred dollars from north stones in quarterly we told them we asked them to put that back paul Katuck neighborhood center they had taken out twenty five hundred and we asked them to put that back that's b b2303 the first one was b2203 b2306 the women's center safe futures was reduced by $250. We asked to have that put back. B23.10 is TVCCA, $565 was removed. We asked them to put them back. B2317, United Community and Family Services, 436 was reduced and we asked that to put them back. Now the town property maintenance, which was B27.1 was reduced by 5,000. We had a discussion about that that remained out of the budget. Land acquisition fund was reduced by five, that stayed out and the farm 1750 house, 20 grand was removed and we that stayed out. Fund and loader was removed and that stayed out. The only the other thing was that was returned was the first selectman had reduced by $2,500 his raise and we uh, we had that put back in. So there was that's the only ones that were that the Board of Finance requested to go back into the Board of Selectmen budget, mainly those social services, nothing with departments. Okay. Well, I'm saying some of the departments should be lower itself. I know with the federal government, they've been giving money out like it's like it's nothing. I think we even bailed out a lot of the college education. You know, I mean, what is going on here? Is this, do I have to take money out of my pocket and pay other people's bills? You know, that's what I look at. I have to look at my own budget. I have to go home. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the budget yet. Because um, I got to go home and look at my budget and see if I can afford the, the increase. I, I believe I can. I think. I think the Board of Finance has done an excellent job, except for, like I say, I, I keep hammering away at these advisory boards that we have, and they go in, and they ask, I know it's not a lot of money, but a little bit here, a little bit there, adds up, adds up, and it adds up. And that's the way I work my budget. I like to see the town work their budget that way, too. Um, I, I don't know if, did you give the, uh, uh, second and third selectmen any raise? I don't remember if you did. They, they should be on the first page. I believe those, there were, the raises, um, how much? 2.5% for those two uh, by union standards. Because the money they get for the job they do is what are they making? Fifty cents an hour. You know, that, those are the and I've been screaming about the the selectmen's budget. I mean, they're the people that really 
really run our town and, and be on top of all the different boards and all the all the stuff that goes on. And I really would like to see, I'd be willing to put my truck off for another five years <laughs> to get them a raise. Anyways, that's all I got to say about it now. You asking for increases is fantastic, Brian. We're all pretty yeah. excited to hear that. Hi, uh, Kate Parento. I live on Pendleton Hill Road. Um, I'm serving as the president of the Wheeler Library Board of Trustees. And by, on behalf of the board, uh, we want to thank the Board of Selectmen and the Board of Finance for supporting our town library in this year's budget and to listening to the townspeople. Our library is a much loved asset that serves our community in so many ways, we're looking forward to doing even more. We're grateful for this financial support that demonstrates that our town values its library in the same way other towns in Connecticut value their town library. Over time, we hope to be funded at the same percent of total revenue as other towns. This financial support means North Stonington believes in what a town library can offer. Thank you. Thank you, Kate. Uh, Kathy White, North Westerly Road. I am, I'm a resident and I'm a taxpayer, but I also use the Wheeler Library. I'm supportive of this budget. Of their, they're asking thirty five thousand that you put in the budget. I came to last year's budget meeting, and I know for the past two years they've stayed at sixty five thousand. And this, I use it all the time. I'm a preschool teacher. I also am a nanny. I worked. I've gone to the library pre-pandemic, during the pandemic, and now after the pandemic, and the resources the Wheeler Library does for families and children um, is remarkable. They have computers. So what they're putting this into the budget is just it will be usable for a lot of families. There's families out there that can't afford to go to the rec department or do other programs, but there's programs at the library like going and getting the passes to the museums or the programs like the nature center coming in. The families that can't afford to do other things can go to the library and do this. Our library isn't just for North Stonington. I, as my job, I look online, all our, the other libraries and what they offer just to see what I can do to provide for the families I work for. So I just, I can't say enough for the resource and for the Wheeler Library, and I, I'm 100% a backing of the budget for them. I also want to thank the Board of Finance, Board of Education, and our selectmen for this budget that we brought forward and all the hard work. I've been going, trying to attend last year and the year before the process that you go through this, and I'm hoping as you go to the next step, because I know it's going to be tougher, especially as we come to vote, and people, there are going to be townspeople out there that are going to say, I don't want that increase. And then we're going to knock it down. And then you're going to have to go back. So what I'm asking of you as we go forward, please do not take this out of the budget. Because it is a huge asset. Because we do have other assets. We have the senior center. We have, you know, the rec department. So I'm asking as the patrons, please, as we move forward, try not to take this out. Thank you. Thank you so much. Nicole? Am I on? Yeah. Um, Nicole Porter, 44 Pinecrest Road, one of the selectmen in town. Um, I want to thank everybody here tonight, both in uh, the room and all of the people online. Um, the When we heard from the library when we heard from parents of the school system, it came through loud and clear. We had numerous emails, phone calls, please. Please don't ever think that your opinions and your wants are not heard. It had a direct result on how we voted and what we put forward. So continue to talk with your friends and your neighbors, continue to come, continue to be part of the process. Um, in the past, and I think I heard the Board of Finance say it one night, um, in the past, the, the majority of the people that came out spoke against um, the budget and wanted more cuts. This year, it was the exact opposite, and it had a direct 
result in the budget that you see in front of you tonight. So thank you and continue to talk with your friends and neighbors. Thank you, Nicole. Hey. Hi, Jason Mancini, Rudiman Road. Uh, I serve on the library's uh, renovation committee. Uh, in speaking, in speaking on behalf of uh, the library, over the years, it's served my family's evolving needs and interests, borrowed books, movies, programs, art, and performances, lectures, crafts, and accessories, uh, and gift time, uh, it's a meeting space, and now serving um, on the renovation committee as an opportunity to give back. Um, of course, the library um, is its principal cause, but it's also a resource center, a community center, a gathering place, uh, provides activities for families, arts and humanities programming, performances and exhibits. What we imagine Wheeler to be uh, is a dynamic, engaging uh, space and it's a connective tissue of our town. Uh, the post-pandemic adjustments, the work from home, meeting space, this is the kind of thing that Amy, her staff and the board uh, begin to imagine for its future. So Wheeler unequivocally supports and serves the interests of every person in our town from infant to senior. Uh, and just a riff off the superintendent's words, um, strong school, strong town. The library is part of the critical infrastructure of this town's educational system. Um, so an investment in the library is an investment in the future. So I do appreciate and support the library's or the committee's consideration of the $100,000 line, but also fully support the library's $120,000 request. So I don't know if there's room to move things. Um, I advocate for that additional 20,000, uh, which would be uh, an additional $3.89 per person in this town. Um, also like to register my displeasure uh, at the annex annexation funding um, and wanna know what does it actually accomplish? Um, I think I've heard recently um, folks talking about having a more productive uh, relationship with the tribal communities. I'd like to imagine what that future looks like. I don't think annexation funding uh, is gonna accomplish anything. I do wanna know what it actually accomplishes though. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Hi, I'm Bethany Brown. I live at 21 Babcock Road. I've lived in North Stonington about 30 years. Uh, my, myself and my husband are both Wheeler graduates. I, uh, my children will be third generation Wheeler graduates. Currently, I'm a professional artist. I homeschool my younger children, and I have my four older children at Wheeler High School Middle School. Since my husband and I moved home after being in Massachusetts for school and jobs, the library has been a huge part of our lives. When my teenagers were younger, I met other moms at story hour and I made friends in town. It has been a huge support for me in homeschooling. The science kits in the bags, the book request system, Amy can tell you that she and the staff over the years have requested and gotten for me hundreds of specific books that we specifically needed. Uh, she, they've helped my kids get excited about reading. We've used coupons, we've used passes to visit all kinds of museums and galleries. And I just say I'm so thankful for the library. When I walk into the library, no one is scolding me or shushing me or making me feel guilty if I'm late, as I've experienced in other libraries. They know me, they know me by name. And they're happy to help my kiddos find whatever book that they are especially interested in. My kids love going to the library. They're excited for new books. They're also excited about the amazing crafts and the scavenger hunts. Over the years, we've done the summer reading challenges, baby yoga, story hour workshops, and special events, such as learning about and getting to see a live owl. My older kids have come here to do homework after school. Uh, we occasionally buy things from the shop local section if we need a gift for someone. It has truly enriched the lives of my family. When I was first starting my business as an artist, I was invited to do a solo show at the library, which gave me a goal and the exposure I needed to get started. I was also able to borrow books about how to start a business in Connecticut and learn about marketing as well as art books. When my kids and I wanted to do something to help the Ukrainian refugees at the beginning of the war, we made monotype prints, which I learned how to do at a workshop at the library with Sue Starr, 
and the library was kind enough to sell them for us. We raised over $600 that went directly to the immediate needs of refugees. And my kids learned that they can make a difference. You know, I meet a lot of people from town in the library. People are happy there. They feel cared for. They can get the resources that they need. I've been personally helped by many of the wonderful books that they have on parenting. They're conveniently located in the children's section so that as your children are browsing, you can find and learn yourself. The library is contributing to the town, not only intellectually, but also socially, emotionally, and economically by helping small businesses get started, providing a safe, calm, and helpful place, and making learning individualized and attractive. It has been said that a rising tide lifts all the boats. The library is the cultural hub of the town and the contributions it makes towards education, community, and inspiration cause ripples outwards that we may not even realize by enriching the lives of the, the residents of this town and creating an ethos that nurtures growth. Thank you. Thank you. First Nelson, Denison Hill Road. Good. Can you hear me? Okay, great. I just wanted, wanted to get that out of the way before I started. So I am happy to report I am celebrating my 10th year this month as a resident of this great town. Um, prior to that, I didn't really understand the concept of a county or why anyone would want to be born and raised in a town and then raise their own kids in this town, which is probably the worst person to follow, so I apologize. But I can say that it's probably because I was never in the right town. 10 years in, I get, I get that now. Um, I'm so thankful to be a part of this town. We have two kids uh, in what I would consider one of the most wonderful school systems around. And that school system was probably the primary reason why we chose to move in this town and get involved. My wife's on the Board of Finance. I joined the Board of the Education Foundation to help fund additional educational grants that the school budget can't fund on its own. And you know, as we're seeing more students come in and bringing tuition, I think we as a group in town voted on the right decisions to fund a new school to bring growth to this town. And while I would have liked to have seen, you know, the original budget by the Board of Ed as as they brought it to us voted, I also appreciate the balance of trying to make very thoughtful cuts to bring a, a budget that was more palatable to the taxpayers. So thank you for your thoughtful decisions in that regard. Um, I'm very happy to see the additional social worker and some of the new um, supplemental staff that this town I think greatly needs. Um, and also within uh, with regards to the library, probably the most unknown gem coming into this town that I wasn't aware of. So while it wasn't a part of the reason why I moved to this town, it is certainly, as others have mentioned, such a huge part of the culture of this town. And I also would like to see, you know, the larger amount of budget that they may have asked for in the past eventually restored, but I'm happy to see it's at least partially funded for now because it is a great resource. My kids love going there. We love going there. Nana and Grandma both love taking them there. It's a great resource for the community. It's a great town. Thank you, Chris. Dave? Dave McCord, uh, 225 Northwest Corner Road. And uh, I've been in town longer than Brian even. Which is a long, 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 long time. And I really uh, appreciate all the people that are come here from the library that uh, to say all the nice things about the library. And we totally agree with everything at the library. I love the library. Uh, I would like to see uh, at least maintaining the, what we're given this year. And I would like to see the town come together on the renovation of the library because they've got a plan to do a lot of work on the library. It's going to cost a lot of money and it needs a lot of funds. And I'd like to see it supported by the, the town as well as the town's people. Thanks. Thank you, Dave. We have an online hand from Chet. Chet, go ahead. Hello. Um, I just wanted to to once again voice my my support for both the town and the Board of Education budget. I think that we have amazing systems on a variety of places within this town. 
whether it be the services you, you receive at the transfer station, um, what the library provides or what our schools provide. And I think that it's important that we fund those fully moving forward so that we're able to continue offering these amazing things to the people who live in town. Um, I had a quick question, Mike, just regarding the, the undesignated fund. Um, I know there's the 8.5% bottom layer and a 17.5% upper upper level that it's allowed at. With the with the end of year financial report, we we're at 20.5%. And I'm just curious what happens if we get the money paid back into that and we go back above that 17.5%? Because it, would that go to this year's budget? Does that go into capital or, or, or what happens? Because it does say that we're the Board of Finance doesn't allow it to go above that 17 and a half. Well, I would imagine that we would use undesignated funds to pay for certain parts of the budget. Okay, so that would come back in perhaps for things like the the, the new truck and those different systems at the that or that would come to lower the, the tax rate. I was just curious. I, I just don't know. And I wasn't certain how exactly that worked. Well, it, you would ostensibly reduce the mill rate and have to use undesignated funds for um, whatever the over whatever if the expenses are over what the revenue is, then you would take the take that from the undesignated fund for that year. Most likely. Okay, so it, it would go something directly like, to pay down the mill rate. Yeah, something most likely like capital or something like that. That's a one-time expense. Okay, I, like, I was just curious because when looking at the numbers there, I wasn't I wasn't sure exactly. I don't remember it being that high, Chad. I mean, I mean, it might have been at one point, but you know, we've had that policy in for two years, and and I don't think I, it's I was just looking at this year's end of year financial report, and it was a twenty and a half at that point, but. Reason, but then we used it because it had to go into the steep and other things. So I know that it got it got affected by that. But part of the reason why the um, undesignated fund balance looks so high for the beginning of the fiscal year is because the um, two percent for the non-lapsing for the Board of Ed didn't come out before the audit was published. So the two hundred eighty-five thousand okay. that went into non-lapsing was still represented in that four point two million. So that came off and that lowers the percent right away. Um, we will have most likely set a mill rate before we would have found any of that money to come back to the undesignated fund. Um, so I think it would be more of a mechanism of having some sort of a vote on how to use those funds that were above and beyond the 17%. Um, but looking at how things are going and the lack of closure on the state project, I don't think we're going to have that problem this year. Yeah. Okay. I was just I curious how exactly that worked. Yeah. I don't think, like as Christine said, wouldn't, Board of Finance talked about whether or not we wanted to use any money from the undesignated fund, and it was a pretty much a unanimous no. Um, so it is the fund saying where it is, and and then any money that comes back from the state from reimbursements will go back into that fund. I mean, I would think it, just on the topic, if if the fund got below eight point five percent, you would have to try other measures in order to to bring that fund balance back up. I mean, there were there were periods. I think maybe ten years ago, where they were using a whatever a ninety-seven point five collection rate for revenue, and you know your budget's obviously much tighter at that point, and more money ends up going back into the undesignated. So you'd have to do things like that to 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 really try to balance that that off. But we're not in that particular spot, particularly with the tax collector uh, how they're how they're performing now. We're 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 killing it as far as particularly for like uh, delinquent fund uh, tax funds and what have you. They're doing a great job there. Well, in that case, I just want to reiterate my support for both of these budgets. I think it's important that they move forward into into town meeting and, and onward to referendum. Thank you. Thanks, Chad. We have an online hand from Dawn. Dawn, please. Don, we can see you're talking, but we can't hear you. How about we'll come back to you, Don, if you can try to figure out if you can get yourself unmuted. We'd love to hear from you. I just want to echo.
echo what they said about the library full support. I won't take any time because it's already been said so well, but just uh, to echo, uh, and I'm in complete agreement with everything that was said about the library. How we doing, Dawn? <laughs> I read not well. <laughs> Let me, uh, are you in support of the library? <laughs> Is there more that you want to talk about? Are you in support of the budgets as they presented? Okay, thank you. Okay. Yeah, are you in Eno? Can you hear me? Yes, of course. 91 Main Street. Um, I'd be remiss. I said it multiple times during the budget process. As we can all tell, the fact that it's 90 degrees in here tonight, this building didn't heal itself. I am very concerned about re entering this building and all the deferred maintenance that's going to come with it. Thanks. Winona? Winona Burdine, 216 Casada Kill Road. Um, speaking as a resident, not a member of the Board of Finance, although I am a member of the Board of Finance and it feels like it's been a long couple of months. Um, you know, I think I've only been in this town four years, four years next week actually. Um, but I made a commitment when I bought here, right? I'm not renting, I'm a homeowner. It's a long term commitment, it's a long term plan. And if you have kids, more than likely you expect them to go K through 12. It's a long-term plan to get them through school. And I think being through this process, sitting there, as well as, as Brian always says, reaching into his wallet to pay the bills, I worry about the town's view of not taking a long-term plan and having a long-term commitment of where we need to be in five years or 10 years, even three years. I'll, I'll just settle for three to five years. There's obviously immediate needs that we have to address. The, the school needs staff. We need books. The, the, the dump need has issues we need to, to worry about. The schools, the roads need fixed. We, there's things we have to deal with. But a long-term plan is something I really feel like we're missing. But the reason that we're here is because we own homes. We're invested in this community. We have kids that are going to go to school for 13 years. If you think about where we are as a community, it is a long-term plan. And I guess I would just implore us to kind of think beyond the next tax year, think of beyond where we are today, and, and think about where do we want to be in three to five years and start planning for that and be vocal about that. Nicole, thank you for telling people to come out. Um, I think I counted 33 people here and online tonight. That's a lot, but that's not a lot compared to the number of people in our community that pay taxes. Where are you? Why aren't you here? Why aren't you telling us what you think? So over the course of the eight or 10 meetings that the Board of Finance had over the last 10 or, tw uh, 10 or 12 weeks, maybe 20 people matched. I can't wait to see how many people show up for the referendum, but we want to hear what you have to say. Do we want to spend more money? Do we not want to spend more money? Where does it need to go? And think long-term. And that's, and that's what I really implore people to, to really kind of take away from this process. Um, you opened, Mike, with thinking about a capital plan. I strongly support our town coming up with a capital plan that thinks about tomorrow and not just today. So um, more from me later, but thank you, everyone. And you guys, this is, it's been a long <laughs> 10 or 12 weeks, but here we are, and everything looks good, right? Like, people are not, nobody's, Brian's not in screen. This is a huge win, I think. And I thought I heard him say put more money in, which is, I had to, I've got to go back and, and rewatch the video. But, you know, it, it's always good to be at the end and nobody's really unhappy. Nobody's really too totally happy. I think we're in a good spot. So thank everyone and thanks for showing up and voicing your opinions. This is great. Thanks, Winona. Just on that note, I mean, we are in a, a year of, redoing our plan of conservation and development. There are, they've been doing community, like little uh, meetings in all different areas of town. Um, 
if you don't get out there and tell them what you want to do, then, you know, it's on you when it, when it's not to your liking. So, you know, we should have more people involved than we, than, than, you know, 20 or 30 people. Um, we are going to hear from everybody in the referendum, but uh, we have a meeting on Wednesday, the board of finance. Uh, we have two sections of public comment. If you have further things you want to talk about, um, with regard to the budget, uh, additions or subtractions or whatever, that's your, your one chance to do it before it gets pushed to a public, um, to a public hearing, I mean, a public meeting. Um, but get involved in the POCD to my own point of determining what, where this town goes. Uh, and if you want to see more, uh, additions to the capital budget or want to be part of that process, just look out for future uh, meetings or make your voice known on Wednesday. I think we might have one more comment or question online. Donna, go ahead. Hi, John Achoka, 6 Rocky Hello Road. I, you know, I really appreciate the Board of Finance. Um, I've been watching a lot of the uh, Zoom meetings online between all of the boards and I appreciate the Board of Finance's stand and trying to rein in uh, both both the other boards. My biggest concern to piggyback on what the other speaker just mentioned is long-term planning. And I feel like the asks, some of the asks are just not sustainable and viable from a long-term perspective. And I just don't know if that's been really looked at. Um, I'm not a fan of raising taxes. I have no kids. So they don't tend any, attend any of the recreation programs, any of the school programs. I'm a big proponent of education, so I do think teachers should be paid fairly, but I don't believe in programming in schools that are unsustainable for such a small school. We can't have it all. And there's some other issues that I have with the Board of Selectmen's um, line items that I won't go into here, but my biggest concern is the, the long-term planning and sustainability of these budgets. You're going to be pricing people out of town. And uh, I was a big fan of last year's going down a smidge. It looks like potentially it might go up a smidge. Um, and I just wanted to voice that opinion, but I do appreciate Board of, Board of Finance really trying to keep a, a, an even keel, if you will. So thank you. Thanks, Jonna. The, as far as your line items are concerned, we're here tonight for a hearing and, and we got to decide um, what stays in, what goes out on Wednesday. Um, so now is the time or, or Wednesday, if you want to do public comment, that's, you know, we'd appreciate hearing your comments. We'd, you know, we're here and that's what we're here for. It's not like we're trying to rush out of this. So if you do have comments about specific line items uh, and you want them addressed by uh, the Board of Selectmen, because they're not going to be addressing these on Wednesday, they're not, it's not their meeting. They'll be here to comment perhaps, but I don't know if you have, if you want to do that now or wait till Wednesday. I'll, I, I really need to give it some more thought, honestly. And, and uh, I wish I had a little bit more data so that I can talk intelligently about it um, because I feel right now it's just an opinion based on feeling and that's just not fair. So um, I, I don't have, I just don't have the data in front of me to support what I feel may be unsustainable. So, but if I get it by Wednesday, I'll, I'll, I'll certainly submit it to the selectman's office by then. Sure. And when we have the public meeting, sorry, what's that happen? Town meeting. Um, there's, there's obviously more time for comment then too. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Jonna. We're planning for the town meeting to be Monday, May 1st, with a referendum on May 15th. Did everyone hear that? Lisa? Hi, Lisa Mazzella, 247 Cassatic Hill. Um, I just want to, um, to share my support for the, the Board of Ed budget and the Board of Selectmen budget. They're good budgets. Um, they painstakingly went through and cut whatever could be cut. If you look at the Board of Ed budget in particular, we cut a bus route 
and um, and uh, oh, thank you. We we move to we cut two powers the, and move the them for grant. Yes, to the ESSA grant. No additional PE teacher. Right. Do you want me to keep going? No, but we yeah, need a lot. We we'll cut a lot for an additional. There, what's in there now? We need like we cut the bus route and the um and the two pairs just moved over to the ESSA grant. Um, but that's where they could find the cut because we need the social worker. The state recommendation is a social worker for every 250 students. We have about 750 students, so even with the two social workers, we're still under the state recommendation. So it's it's really critical that 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 stays in the budget. Um, the alternative ed program, uh, so important. Um, the, the students that would be participating in the program, the eight to ten students, they have they have needs. They, they can't um, necessarily learn in the traditional classroom environment. So they would need to have a more individualized approach to learning. Um, you know, could be here across the street, but if it's not here across the street for our own alternative ed program, they would be outsourced. And that would cost more money than now. So that is really you know, what makes most sense financially to do that. So I would ask the Board of Finance to please, or, or to any residents, you know, if you have questions about the alternative ed program or the need for the social worker, please do call the superintendent's office or um, or contact our board of ed chair um, to get those questions answered. Um, I also would like to speak about the library. I'm in full support of the library. Um, they are the, it's the hub, it's our community hub. Um, all kinds of programs. I bring my grandkids there almost every Thursday for a story time, for a story hour, and Miss Emily's always there teaching them new songs and reading them books and, and um, having an activity there. Um, then we go upstairs and we choose books for, uh, for the kids to bring home. My granddaughter is very, she's four, very much into fairies. She was looking for fairy books, but they didn't have one with the big brilliant pictures. And so, um, I just happened to mention it to Amy, and she found another library that had books like that, and she had them shipped to this library just so my little granddaughter could have those books to read. Um, it's a shared space, it's a town space. Uh, they have, we've had selectman debates there. We have open mic nights there for uh, the Wheeler Music Boosters, um, all kinds of children's programs. You name it, it's it's been there. There's been fundraise fundraising there. I had my daughter-in-law's baby shower there. I mean, it's um, it's the place to be. But um, I would I would just ask that you leave these budgets the same moving forward to the referendum, and please do not cut. We need the we need this. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Anyone else? Brian. I just wanted to. I forgot about it. I just wanted to say yeah leave the library alone because I don't, I'll say it again I said it at one of your meetings before that was that was done by the wheel of family that had a foresight to say it was a school it was a wheel of school and it'll be an honor to them to keep that library going the people that have worked there are great I've been to some functions there the only thing I want to see the library do really is is really take a look at those those lions when you come out because I think they got to put the tails back on. It's not a pleasant sight to look at it right now. <laughs> Thank you. Brian, anytime you support extra money, shockingly, shockingly a pleasant, pleasant time. Thank you. No one online? Uh, I just want to say thank you to my fellow Board of Finance members for all being here. Uh, shockingly, it's not every time that they all are here for the comments. And uh, the only one that's missing is Paul because he's, congratulations to him, he's retiring after how many years with Pfizer and and um, well-deserved. And so I volunteered to step in for him. But thanks to my fellow members for being here. Um, 
And with that, we can adjourn. Any more questions come Wednesday? Thanks. <laughs>